Former Cornell University students pleaded guilty to making online threats against Jewish students in the weeks that followed Hamas's attack on Israel. On Wednesday, 21-year-old uh, Patrick Day admitted to writing the messages that sparked security concerns on campus in October. In one post in a student forum, he threatened to, quote, bring an assault rifle to campus and shoot all you pig Jews. He faces up to five years in prison when he is sentenced in August. Let's bring in right now the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt. His group is out with a new report grading how 86 colleges, including Cornell, Alex Corson's own, have uh, responded to anti-Semitic incidents on campus. I, I notice in these gradings, you, 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 do have, you do have schools of interest here. We do. You have Williams, Vandy, uh, Cornell, uh, you Harvard. Right. You left Alabama out of there, but we know we would have graded an A-plus on that anyway. I'm so, sure. so that's good. Sure. I want to talk, first of all, about something we said off the top of the show that you and yeah. I were discussing. And that is, um, that is that Iran, a country since 1979 that's been the epicenter of terrorism across the world, that is considered the United States, the, the great Satan since 1979, um, I'm so glad to see we're sending uh, our top general in the region to Israel and sending a very strong message to the Iranians. Yeah. Don't mistake friends having heated arguments mm -hmm. with friends not backing friends in times of trouble. We're, we're going to be there uh, for Israel, especially when it, when it deals with Iran. Yeah, look, Iran is Israel's enemy. Iran is America's enemy. Iran is the enemy of all liberal-minded people, you know, in the world. I mean, this is a fascist theocracy. We've seen what they've done to their own people, shooting protesters dead in the streets, right? We've seen what they've done around the region, destabilizing countries, weakening economies. No one is happier. No one is happier about the rise of anti-Semitism here in the United States, about the rise of extremism everywhere, about things unfolding in our streets, than the mullahs in Tehran. No. They love this <clears throat> chaos. And let's be clear, they are no real supporters of the Palestinian people. They support Hamas and Jihad. No. They want violence and they, you know, look. Jonathan, I, I'll just say here, I'll just say here, I, not only are the Iranians not supporters of the Palestinian people, uh, very few Arab countries across the region are supporters of the Palestinian people yeah. and, and, and never have been. That's why we, I think we do have an opportunity right now with the Jordanians, with the Emiratis, with the Saudis, with a group of Sunni Arab nations saying, we want to help in Gaza. Yes. We want to figure out a way to come in and help out if the United States is there with us. I, I, I think that's, that is a hopeful and positive development after the, the hell of, of this war yeah. uh, comes to a conclusion. I want to talk about this report card, but before we get into the report card, which we know is going to be bad, I could mm. have had this conversation with you in 2003 on Scarborough Country, yeah. and we could have <clears throat> named 15 incidents that had happened over the past couple months. Yep. I mean, it is it's unfortunately, uh, it's just happened with left-wing professors for a very long time. But now it's infecting the rest of, of I'm, I'm afraid, too many administrations and also the students. I'm curious, though, from October forward to now, have you noticed some universities realigning and being more uh, responsible and supporting free speech at the same time, supporting the rights of Jewish students who at many times have fled to their dorm rooms in fear for their safety. Oh yeah, look, I spent the day at Harvard Law School yesterday and the stories there were shocking. This is Harvard Law School. And to hear how so many of the students there don't seem to understand the First Amendment, think freedom of assembly means the freedom to assemble around your Jewish students and intimidate and terrorize them. And I've heard stories not just about students retreating to the Hillel, retreating to their dorms, but leaving campuses altogether, Joe, because the environment is so uncomfortable. 
But look, to your point, there are some good stories here. Ron Leibowitz, the president at Brandeis, stepping up and shutting down this group called Students for Justice in Palestine, the main progenitor of all this chaos and all this intimidation on campus. At Elon University, they've done some really good stuff to bring students together. At Dartmouth, President Belloc has been really, really important. By the way, but can we talk about Dartmouth really quickly? Sure. From the very start, <laughs> it wasn't an us or them. Mm -hmm. You had professors, one, who, who, who sympathized uh, with the Palestinian people, mm -hmm. even even in those uh, even in the, in the days after the attack, uh, was not afraid to stand mm -hmm. up and, mm -hmm. and do that. And you had an Israeli professor, and these two people were friends before October seventh. Yes. They were friends after October seventh, and they came together and they brought the student body together. And the president brought the student body together and said, "Listen, we disagree with each yep. other. Couldn't disagree with each other anymore." But we're going to have a conversation, and we're going to talk through this. I entirely Isn't agree. Isn't that incredible what they did there? Yeah, look, I mean, there may be things that Dartmouth could do better, but the way that those professors stepped up, and President Belloc, who'd been at Barnard, she knew it. she had to do something. President Julio Frank at the University of Miami has been a stalwart. Ben Sass at the University of Florida. I mean, you have seen these people, these presidents, and that's a good point. Leadership is the difference between an A and an F. Demonstrating you don't just have academic standards, but you also have moral standards. And all the students on the campus, irrespective of how they pray or where they're from, deserve to get the right treatment and respect and have their identity supported. There's just something deeply wrong for these schools that talk about you know, diversity and inclusion when that involves the exclusion of Jewish students. Well, and Rev, when you have what happened on college campuses, where you have Israeli professors, Palestinian professors coming together, you not only protect Jewish students from, from hate, you, you uh, uh, attack, uh, you, you, you stop attacks against Muslim students and you send a message. This is not acceptable. We will talk to each other, but Muslim students will talk and walk around the campus in peace, and Jewish students will do the same. Yeah. No, absolutely. In fact, you can't protect Muslims or others if you don't protect Jewish students as well as vice versa. And, uh, you know, Jonathan, you and I, uh, ADL, Nash Action Network, yeah. Urban League, and uh, Unidos, we uh, got the first hate summit Yep. at the White House with President Biden year before last around these things. I think, one, uh, what I'm asking you is a lot of the anti-Semitic attacks we saw yeah. happened even before uh, what we're seeing now going on and has only been exploited by many haters uh, on what is going on in Gaza and in and, and Israel. And you and I have had frank discussions. I disagree with Netanyahu. I think Netanyahu is bad for everything. But at the same time, you can be anti-Netanyahu and not anti-Israel. You can be anti-Hamas and not be anti-Gaza. Talk about how we must have the kind of situation where we can unite even if we disagree on some things and disagree openly, but we unite around stopping the hate that this report brings out about uh, what's happening to Jews. Because even though you and I may have different views on some things in terms of Netanyahu's leadership, we still work together, talk together often of on how we stop the hate. Of course, like just and because, the hate attacks. Oh, of course, like just because you don't like a politician doesn't mean you can't find common ground in so much else. And the Jewish and black communities have so much in common, including the vast majority of American Jews want dignity and decency for Palestinians. But the anti-Zionism that's coming out, Rev, that exploded on October the 7th here in America, to your point, with slander and intimidation and attacks, clearly that's not okay. So I think what we really need to see, and this report card is designed to create a conversation, to create like an objective baseline, so universities, colleges, all of them will realize, again, if you wanna support all your students, you need to make sure that they all feel equally protected, including your Jewish students. That's what this is about. And again, let's be entirely clear, just because you don't agree on politics or on every single issue doesn't mean you shouldn't agree on the decency of all people. Exactly. CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, thank you. Before we let you go, 
Tell us about the dog tag you're wearing around. The dog tag is for the hostages, including five Americans, 130 some odd people, men, women, elderly, sick and disabled, being held in tunnels, in cages below Gaza. This war will end tomorrow if Hamas would commit to handing over the hostages. That's what this dog tag is for. It's almost 190 days. Over six months. Over, over six, six months. months. Held in caves uh, beneath Gaza. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Willie.